Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another, another episode of the show and uh, the next wine in our restaurant series of wines. All right, so we've got the, um, trying to put the fat on, no, nope. time for the 2008 Louis M. Martini Cabernet Sauvignon, Sonoma County, let's get that a little close up of that, um, bought this at HEB, it says specs. Um, I got a lot of I got some HEB wine to do eventually, but I wanted to get these done. Uh, bought an HEB for thirteen dollars ninety nine cents. Um, you can find it in your restaurant for around thirty to forty dollars. Uh, the restaurant probably paid anywhere between eight and ten bucks for it. Um, they may have paid a little bit more. I don't think they paid any less than eight, but they may pay a little bit more for it. But um, Anyway, so that's about what they paid for it, and uh, on the website it's seventeen bucks. Just so you know. Uh, anyway, so um, I don't really have any information, you know, because my next one is a couple wines. Actually, the next one is this one. So uh, nothing. Really, not a whole heck of a lot on here. They they talk about the um, having unusually dry weather in late winter and spring, followed by unexpected April frost. Blah, 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 blah. So they kind of talked about the vintage itself. And um, they harvested earlier than usual uh, in August and was accelerated in early September to, to avoid a heat wave that threatened to ripen the grapes too rapidly. Let's talk about that real quick. Um, being in Texas, where it does get hot, um, that's a very big concern. Um, there's a lot of things that go into, into vintages and what makes a good vintage versus another one why the 2007 might be better than the 2008 or worse than the 2008 or versus 2002 or 1995, who knows. Um, sunshine, how hot it is, you know, the temperatures, like how hot it got during the day, how cold it got at night, so if there's a large temperature swing, small temperature swing, uh, how long did that last, how many hours of sunshine do you have, was it cloudy, how much did it rain, was there frost, did, uh, did, was there hail from hailstorms? Um, did it rain right when you're about to harvest? How how um, how ripe are the grapes? So all these factors contribute to when they're going to harvest the grapes. And you know these guys are out there every day when they're getting closer and closer to harvesting things. You know they're they're breaking the grapes with their fingers to kind of look at the juice and they're tasting it and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot to go on that goes on with trying to figure out when you're going to pick the grapes. And these guys, a lot of times, I mean, I know I had one that said they took a month to harvest them. But, I mean, some of these people, depending on the type of wine they're making, they're deciding within hours of whether they're going to pick or not based upon the ripeness level and, and whether it's going to rain that day or not that they're going to try to harvest as many as they can. So, enough of that. So, Louis, the Louis and Martini uh, winery also... Let's kind of talk about them for a second. Uh, they've been around for quite a while. Um, Louis M. Martini built his first winery in 1933. Uh, it stayed in the it has stayed in the family, and um, they they've been making some wine for quite a while. So this is not a this is not a new up and coming winery. They've been around for a minute, for a minute. They've been around for a while, and uh, let's check them out. Okay, so we've switched over to uh, we switched over to cabs now. We've been doing all these merlots, right? And just like I smelled when I opened it at first, about two hours ish ago, maybe a little bit longer ago. A lot of the smoke, a lot of that um, smoke bomb type of stuff. Earthiness, minerality. 
I'm not getting a lot of, not a lot of fruit. It's like a hint of red, dark red fruits. All right, so let's taste it. but it's a lot of tannins. You need some steak with this. You need some fat going up in your mouth on this. Getting some decent fruit out of this thing. Another one I'm, I'm really liking a lot. Uh, get some decent fruit out of it. It's, um, they say black cherries and, and currant and spice. Black cherries, sure. I'll get that. Uh, I'm, also get, I th I'm also getting some raspberries out of it. Currant, not really sure if I'm getting currant out of it. I've had currant. I've had you know plenty of other wines that they're supposed to have currant in it, um, but it's not a flavor that I, I remember a whole heck of a lot. I need to eat more of it so that I'm more familiar with it. But I'm also getting some vegetal out of this, like like just green, like leaf, like like a like leaves, not like not like lettuce, spinachy. Spinachy, maybe? I don't know. But that that little bit of sweetness that I, I've gotten from green leafy, you know, from green leaf, you know, vegetables. Medium finish, not really long in the finish. Um, now that I've had the wine a little bit more, the tannins aren't killing me, uh, but that initial attack was really, really, really heavy. Um, makes my mouth water. I think it's a really good wine. Uh, I, I'd, I'd say uh, it's got it's got nice. I think it's got a nice balance of fruit with uh, uh, with a little bit of that minerality, but it's definitely more of a fruit forward wine. You know, I'd say medium to heavy bodied. Not really heavy body, but you know, kind of getting up there on, on, on the, the body feel type of thing. Another food wine, I think it, it goes well with some food. Um, and I, I can't get the salad aspect, the leafy the spinach thing out of my head. I can see having spinach salad with this, enhancing the, you know, giving that balance of the fruit with the leafiness. I don't know why, like a chicken, like a, you know, a little. A little spinach salad with honey mustard dressing or, or, or honey balsamic dressing and um, some chicken on it, some grilled chicken. Sounds kind of funny to do that with a Cabernet Sauvignon, but that's what I would that's what I would eat with this. Absolutely, I would eat that with this. You know, a, a chicken spinach salad. Hmm. And you still get the little smoke bombiness, you know. So um, I like this one a lot. Definitely, you can find this for $14. Um, get it. I'm going to give it um, I'm gonna give it an 89. Not quite, doesn't quite make it into the 90 realm for me, but uh, 89. Really respectable score. Good job. Contest. We haven't done a contest in one, two, three, four episodes. Uh, or at least these episodes. So, what's the contest again? Well, get yourself. A nice sheet of stickers. I've got a couple sheets here I can use. Actually, I've got 
three sheets. I can, well, two sheets because one is given away. One's already spoken for. So get yourself some, do some guerrilla marketing for me. Take some pictures of it. 1337 wine stickers. Here's how you do it. Here's how you win the contest. Now, this is going to require you to go to the website. So all you people on TiVo chilling on the couch, like I always did with all the other, or do with all the other um, video podcasts I've, I've watched in the past or still watch, um, you have to get off your keister, head over to the computer, type in 1337wine.com, and the first person to comment about this wine and tell me what TARDIS stands for. So first of all, you got to figure out what TARDIS is if you're not um, if you're not already in the know. You got to tell me what TARDIS stands for. First person who does that, I will contact you and I will send you some stickers. That's going to do it for tonight or today. And hope everyone has a great week or weekend or had one. And we'll see everybody again next time.